Well, hey, everybody out there. Welcome back to the channel. It's Chris here from JMNC Games, and today we are taking a look at the fun fishing dice game Fleet. It's for one to four players, ages eight and up, and the average game time is just about 20 to 30 minutes. If you haven't already done so, take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. We greatly do appreciate that, and it sure does help us grow. And if you feel so inclined, if the video has helped you in any way, you can support the channel directly by visiting the application Buy Me a Coffee. Now let's dive in and take a look at what's inside the box. There's two score pads, six boat dice, four town dice, the first player marker, three captain's tokens, five captain's cards, and ten trophy cards. To set up, each player will need one sheet from each score pad. The sheets are double-sided, so you can use them for more than one game. In addition, they will also need something to mark their score pad with. Each player should first roll one of the boat dice. That is the dice with all of the creatures on them. Whatever they roll will be their starting bonus. If they happen to roll the coins, they should re-roll until they get one of the creatures. Whichever fish that they get, they should mark the first three boxes of that section going top down. When you do this, you will automatically get your first license and first boat. So go ahead and mark the first license and boat for that column as well. Now, to play the game, you will need the correct amount of dice depending on the number of people playing. There are going to be two sets of dice. First, the boat dice, the ones with the creatures. If you are playing with four players, you should have five dice. Three players, four dice, and two players, three dice. For the town dice, that's the one with the black symbols, you will need to create a group of dice like this. Four players, four town dice, and one boat die. Three players, three town dice, and one boat die. Two players, two town dice, and one boat die. Choose a player to go first and give that player the first player marker. The game is played over 10 rounds, and each round there is four phases. There is a reminder here at the bottom of your score pad to keep track on what happens in each of the rounds. Let's start with the boat phase. The first player takes all of the boat dice used in the game depending on the amount of people and rolls the dice into the center of the playing area. That same player now looks at the dice and chooses one that they wish to select for their turn. Whichever die they select, they take and place in front of themselves. They now mark that section of their scorecard starting with the box that is closest to the top that has not already been marked. You cannot skip a box on the card. You must work your way down from top to bottom. Now the next player looks at the remaining dice and does the same thing. Chooses one and places it in front of themselves and marks their scorecard. Keep doing this until all players have had their turn and there will be one die left over that no one has chosen. The remaining die, whatever symbol is shown, all players will now receive. So all players will mark their scorecard accordingly. Once this is done, it ends the boat phase. The next phase is the income phase. All players collect one coin indicated here on the score sheet. There are ways to increase your income during the income phase by unlocking different areas, such as getting lobster licenses or some areas in the wharf. If you have unlocked these areas, then you should apply the appropriate amount of coins during the income phase. Next is the fishing phase. However, this only takes place on the even rounds. During the fishing phase, all boats that have been unlocked will collect one fish, with the exception of the oyster boats. They will get two fish each, or can choose to do one fish and collect one coin. 
Finally, there is the town phase, which works the same way as the boat phase, just with the other dice. The current starting player rolls all of the dice needed from the town phase. They then choose one of the dice to be their selection. If they choose the one die that is like the boat dice, it works the same way as the boat phase. If they choose one of the other dice, depending on the symbol, will determine what they do. If it's an anchor, this is the harbor, and the player can select one of the boxes in the harbor with the same rules applying as it does for the boat phase. All ships in the harbor are treated like boats with the exception of the captain's club. We'll go over this in more detail in just a moment. If they choose this symbol, this is the wharf, and they can choose to mark off one of the available boxes in this area. Some of them give you points at the end of the game, and some of them earn you coins during the game. If they choose this symbol, it is the market. When doing so, you count the total number of fish currently marked off on your scorecard. Check that total against the scale listed, and then receive that many coins on your coin tracker. Once the player has made their selection, they take the die away from the rest and perform their action. The next player chooses one of the remaining dice, and so on. Whatever die is left over, all players receive the action of that die. Once the town phase is complete, this ends the round. Reset all of the dice. Pass the first player marker to the next player, and repeat the process for the next round, until 10 rounds have been completed, which ends the game. Before we move on to scoring, let's take a look at the coin track. Periodically, you will see a star on the coin tracker. When a star is ticked off, this means that a player can now place one X on the topmost space of any area of your scorecard. This can be boats, the harbor, or the wharf. If you happen to mark off two stars in the same turn, then you can choose two places to put an X. Another special feature a player can use is to take any die, and instead of using the feature indicated, you can take one coin on your coin tracker instead. When adding the score, you will see here the reminder of how to tally each section. For fish, give yourself one point for every fish you have in your boat or harbor. For boats, you will see here, if you have been able to mark off these boats, you will score that many victory points per boat that you were able to unlock. For licenses, if you are able to unlock all three of a particular kind, you will score the victory points listed on the scorecard. For buildings, you look at the wharf and score whatever points have been marked off in that section. And in the bonus section, if you happen to have scored in the King Crab area, you would indicate those scores here. The player with the highest total score is the winner of the game. Now let's look at each section in more detail. First, we'll start with the licenses. For the shrimp, the first license, if you choose a shrimp die, you can actually use it to mark off any of the other boat dice areas. The second level does the same thing, plus you get to take an additional star action, meaning that you can mark off one box of any section. And the third license will allow you to mark off two boxes of any boat dice section and also take a star action. For the cod license, the first one will give you one coin each time you launch a new boat. The second one will give you two coins each time you launch a new boat, and the third will give you three. The lobster license will increase your income bonus by one during the income phase. Will increase by two for the second license and three for the third. The swordfish license on the first one, after the fishing phase, you'll be able to take one star action. When unlocking the second license, you can immediately collect two coins, 
Also, after each fishing phase, collect one coin and take one star action. The third license will give you two star actions after each fishing phase. For the oyster license, all three are the same. Only the second one will provide two coins immediately when unlocked. Next, the harbor ships. The king crab boat, when you finally unlock the license, you must choose one of the options listed. Once chosen, it cannot be changed. The king crab license will give you five victory points for licenses plus bonus points at the end of the game based on which option you choose. In the captain's club, each time you fill in one of those fishing circles, you can take an extra fishing phase for yourself. Fill in any fish in unlocked boats that are not already full. You do not get to take the swordfish bonus during these types of fishing phases. The research vessel, each one that you unlock, will give you an additional victory point. If you launch the barge, this can be very helpful if you have full boats. When launched, if during the fishing phase you have a boat that is full and cannot take any more fish, then the barge can collect that fish. The Inuit boats, when launched, will give you more opportunity for collecting fish during a fishing phase. Now we'll look at the wharf. The casino, after checking the activation circle, you may now, after selecting your die on your turn, choose to re-roll that die for a different result. However, you must take whatever that result is. This section is also worth two victory points. The bank and trust will score you two victory points for each that you mark off. The salvage yard, once filling in the circle, you may, when selecting your die, instead of using it as normal, you can use it to take one star action, and it's also worth two victory points. The fisherman's pub, when completed, will provide ten victory points. The bait shop, once completed, you can now use any die, and instead of using it normally, collect two coins instead, worth two victory points. The smokehouse, once completed, you can gain two additional coins when taking the market on your turn, and it's worth three victory points. The canning company, when completed, if you have any full fishing boats, you can add one income per full boat during the income phase. The seafood buffet, after checking off the circle on future turns, will select a boat die. Instead of marking it off normally, you can choose to mark off the corresponding symbol at the buffet. For each one that you mark off by the end of the game, you will receive the indicated victory points. There are the captain's cards, which can be used at the start of the game to assign what starting bonus each player will take instead of rolling a die. Plus, each captain's card will provide a bonus action indicated. The trophy cards are also optional, during the setup, randomly select one gold and one silver. Place them face up in the area where all players can see. Gold trophies are awarded five victory points, whoever best meets the scoring condition listed on the card. Silver trophies provide five victory points for the first player who meets the conditions. And that's how you play Fleet. Thanks for joining us today. We sure hope you enjoyed our explanation on Fleet. If you've got any questions, you can always ask those down in the comments below, and I'll try to answer those as quickly as I can. And if uh, you haven't already done so, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. We greatly do appreciate that. Well, now we know the basics, so let's play.